How's it going everybody? My name is Charlie Thompson. I am the owner and founder of Apostle Studio and today in this tutorial we are going to be creating this effect here with the rock and then having um, liquid kind of pour off it um, in a certain direction. Um, for this case it was gold um, and I added a couple of stuff in post there but if we just back out of this really quickly um, and quickly look at the render view we can also create this similar effect. I have made a couple of different changes here, um, but yeah, we're going to see what we can do with that. And I'm going to leave it up to you guys what material you want to add in. But for part one, we need to create the fluid um, and the geometry. And then in part two, we are going to add a material as well as render in it. So first of all, what you want to do is you want to actually add in a sphere. And we're going to change this to tutorial. Uh, and we're going to jump straight in. So we have the sphere here. If you select it, we're going to come to primitive type. And we're going to change this to polygon. We're now going to come down to the frequency. And we're going to up it to 100. Just to add a little bit more detail. I am on points at the moment. So I'm just going to come off that. Next, what I'm going to add in is um, a point VOP. And this is where we're going to add in the noise to create our rock. So if we just select that and jump in. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger for you guys so you can see. Uh, just move those over here. First of all, what you want to add in is from the position, you're going to add in a noise. So we're going to add the noise in. Uh, we're going to bring that, leave that up here. We're now going to come off the noise and we're going to add in a displacement uh, from normal. So that comes onto the amount automatically. Now we need to add the position into the position. We're going to add the position here to position and the end to the end so that's what we've got so far we're also going to add in and normalize um, this is going to go to the end and this one's going to go in between these two here so um, if you go ahead and copy what I've got there you can pause the video um, but if you're all up to scratch we're going to jump back out and we're going to show you what that looks like so as you can see we're from that to that so that is exactly what we need i am going to jump out of that a little bit uh, we now need to create a second one so we're just going to duplicate this uh, we are going to add in a transform for both and we're also skipping ahead a little bit we are going to add in a color and this is going to be for both of them as well this is going to help us when we come to the attribute transfer so First one, we're going to change it to black, and the second one, we're going to change it to red. First of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually add it in a merge. I'm going to merge them both together, and now what we need to do is we need to actually change the transform on the one. So I'm going to move it. I'm just going to randomly rotate it a little bit, nothing too crazy. I'm going to make sure there's not too many of these bits down here. Um, it'll make sense later on. So you want thicker lines. And that, I believe, is good enough. So we're going to leave that like that. Um, I am going to now delete the merge. I'm going to add in a attribute transfer node. First one into the black and the second one into the red. If we jump over to conditions, we can actually bring this down here, the distance threshold to 0 0.01, and it'll give us the lines here where each one of these is kind of like connecting. Uh, so if I quickly show you that, that bit there is then connecting with all the dark bits. So that is exactly what we need, and we are now going to jump out of that. We're going to add in a scatter node, and this scatter node is where we're going to add our points. So if I come back out of this at the moment just to show you, um, you'll see, you can see the black and you can also see the red points. Now what we need is just the red. So you're going to come up, select scatter, come up here, check the density attribute and we're going to change it to capital C and D for the color attribute. So at the moment we've got a lot of points and each one of these points is going to be where we're going to emit the particles from which we're going to then going to turn into fluid so there's a little bit too many there i'm going to change this down to roughly around about 25 um, 
and yeah i think that do or we could actually put it down to let's see what 100 does we can always come down and delete a few or um actually just bring that down later on it's the same with everything else we can move this uh, we can actually change the rotation if we want to and it'll add more points in and different stuff but i'm just going to undo that real quickly next up we can actually add in a copy uh, two points and the first one needs to be the sphere and what we're copying it from um, and the second one should be the points which we're copying the geometry to so if we add in the sphere and I'm just going to add in a transform so we can scale it and we link that on at the moment it's going to be massive which it is and we also need to change the primitive type to polygon we're going to leave it at two um, if I quickly show you, each one of these points here is going to be emitting our particles. So we don't want too many or else our computer will crash. So now what we're going to do is we're going to come onto the transfer and we're actually going to turn this down to 0 0.01. 0 0.001. Okay, there we go. And you'll see it's absolutely tiny. We bring the scatters in. Um, they are the perfect size. So that is fab. I have noticed there is quite a lot of points there, so I am going to bring this down to like 50. Um, we can also randomize it um, after as well, but I think that's fine. So now we can add in the points, uh, the pop network, which we can then emit our particles from. So if you come up to the pop source, we're going to change it from scatter onto surface to points. We're going to leave everything else for now. Uh, we're going to leave the birth rate to 5000 we are going to bump that up later on to give us a little bit more detail but for now we're just going to leave it at that i'm going to add in a force because at the moment if we play it back nothing's happening they're just all emitting in one place um so i'm going to add in a pop attract and i found this was the best force for this scenario but if you find something better um, go ahead and use that but for both goals here I'm going to change the y-axis I'm going to put it at minus 4 um, minus 4 so I'll show you what this does now and if we play this back they're always they're all going in a downward force because it's minus and if I show you the grid from the top view so you got 0 minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 minus 4 and then so on and so forth if you flip that down, imagine it, and that is basically minus four down. So you can bump this up more, you can bring it down less. It's totally up to you. Coming on, we're gonna add in a pop drag, just to slow things down a little bit. Um, I'm not gonna change any of the settings, I'm just gonna leave it as it is. So we've got this animation now, which is terrible because if we end up actually coming out of this and we view it, we then view our rock. Um, you'll notice that it's actually going through the rock and it's not actually colliding with anything. So we need to change that and we actually need to add in a collision geometry. So we're going to add in a merge and we're not going to bother merging the colors, but we are going to merge the transform nodes. And there we go. We have our rock right there. Um, now what we can do is um, just to show a bit more detail we can add in a face and we can put the pre-comp normals on so now we can see all the shadows and everything else and that is our final rock there um, you can go back and obviously add a bit more detail here and there but that is perfect for us I'm now going to make sure I've got the face viewed and I'm going to jump back out and I'm going to come up to the collision and add a static object so that should have worked and now if we go back into the tutorial and into our pop network there we go we have our rock um, I am going to just disable this I'm going to come on to collision and I'm going to change this to surface I'm also going to come up to the bullet data and I'm just going to change this to concave uh, and we will view that again um, also, if you jump back out, we are going to quickly add in a transform node uh, in between these two here, um, just so we can separate the particles a little bit from the, the rock geometry. So 
we're going to change this and we're going to put it to 0, uh, 1 1.01 so they kind of come out a little bit they're not crazy out some of them are still inside the geometry which is fine but majority of the um, points are outside so that should work perfectly now we can jump back in and we can test this so if we play it now you see the actual points are colliding with the geometry which is exactly what we want uh, there isn't that many coming off but that's just because we haven't upped the birth rate um, if I pause this now and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to not view that so you can see already points are colliding with the geometry um, which is what we want so if we show that up now um, you I've just noticed you can see that there is the particles inside the geometry so you might have to come back out and move this transfer up a little bit more and then do it again and see if that does it and play that back shouldn't take too long if there is a little bit in there it doesn't matter too much it's not going to affect the um, overall look uh, there is a little bit there but I think we'll be fine with that guys so what I have also noticed is that a couple of these points are actually just going straight down and I don't really like that concept so I'm going to go back out and I'm actually going to delete them. If I view them here, uh, if I just quickly kind of like show it there and also come up to the scatter, I'm really going to select them and I'm going to just find the points. I'm going to make sure I can select the points first. Make sure you are on the scatter as well and we're going to just go in and we're going to select all these straight ones here. There is quite a clump of them here as well, so I'm going to delete those three there as well. You can come back in, it's personal preference to delete the ones that you want to delete. Um, that one is also very straight. But I think that is it. So you're just going to go back and you're just going to hit delete. It'll create a blast node of just those points. Um, now what we can do is we can actually go back into the pop network and we can restart our simulation. So these ones, even though they look like they're going to come down straight, they do hit the wall, which disperts them a little bit, which is nice. Uh, you've got a little bit of a river fall kind of coming down here. And I kind of like that effect. So now we've got that. These particles will end up going on forever and ever. But we don't want to do that, so we're going to come up to the pop source, and we're going to come over to the birth, and we're going to change the life expectancy to 2, and the life variance to 1. So if you play this back now, um, hopefully, around about 72 frames in, they should start deleting, and shouldn't go any further. So yeah, here we are. They are now deleting at that point there, which is what we want. At the moment, we have pretty much done the particle simulation. I don't think there's much more we need to do. Obviously, if we went back and decided we wanted to change all these kind of settings here, it would affect this delete node, or the blast. So if you did change something here, you'd have to delete that and then go back through different points um, as they would have all changed and delete them. So I'm happy with this. Now what we want to do is we actually want to add a surface to these particles to make it look more of a fluid. So we're going to add in a particle fluid surface. Let's take that one. So if I show you this now, um, it is only showing you the fluid so I can come back up here and I can just move this stuff to one side. I'm going to add in a merge. We're going to put that one there, come off the face and onto that, just like that. Um, the reason why it's like that is because we need to change the normal. We need to actually add in the face here as well. Um, make sure when you add this in, uh, you've checked the normals. So now that is perfectly fine, apart from there's no detail to the fluid at all. And to change this, we can actually come over to the particle fluid surface and the particle separation. So I'm going to change this to 0 0.02 and you'll see a 
big difference here. So you could just stick with this. You could also go in and you can change a couple more of these stuff here. I recommend probably bringing this down. It adds a little bit more detail to 0.4, uh, which has a lot more detail, which is nice. Um, you can also see the size of the particles, which I might bring down to 0.5. You'll see them all disappear a little bit. And they'll also go very, very small, which makes it look a little bit more realistic. So that is basically it for the fluid. We can now quickly add in a transform. Uh, just to add a bit of rotation on, I have already added in a camera. And what you can do is you can just rotate that to a certain angle, make it look pretty cool and dynamic. And there we go. So to view this a little bit better, I'm going to come over to the particle fluid surface. I'm going to come onto surfacing and I'm going to come down to the bottom and where it says visualize, we're going to change this to the velocity. And um, as you can see, it's just all blue. But if you come over here onto the range, leave it at zero, but change this to one. It'll add a bit more of a cooler detail and shows where most of the velocity is basically not moving, which is the darker blue and uh, where it gets lighter is where it starts moving a lot more so that is our particle effect done for part one part two we will move on to actually creating the texture and rendering so um, i'll see you guys in that one